Prime Minister Gillard refused to take any questions at her press conference this afternoon and she declined an invitation to join this program. The Deputy Prime Minister Wayne Swan also didn't want to face questions tonight. Somebody who is prepared to explain his position and the situation inside the Labor Party is the man who brought all this to a head today, Simon Crane. Thank you very much for coming in. Is today's yeah. outcome what you had in mind? No. What did but you it's an outcome. I said that what I wanted was a circuit breaker. It's not the circuit breaker I thought, but nevertheless, it, it is a circuit breaker. Um, because she's been re endorsed unopposed. I'm surprised that Kevin Rudd didn't stand. I can't understand why all of this agitation would be on, including the need to bring it to a head then for the pretender not to stump up but he so that was a that was a, he should have run there's no question about that lee he should have run because i think that itself would have um, been an important uh, cleansing i suppose for the party but that didn't happen um, i think it does give the prime minister quite frankly a much stronger mandate and it certainly means that not only the call for the um, destabilisation must stop, in my view there's no way he can countenance or credibly argue that his position should be taken seriously. But he said today that he gave an undertaking that he wouldn't challenge, that he would have to be drafted, and so he said today that he was simply sticking by that's, that undertaking. That's rubbish. She gave him the way out. He wasn't challenging. The Prime Minister called it on. Called it on because I asked her to. Now, at one stage, that wasn't going to happen, and then the petition was going to happen. How silly would the petitioners have looked, having called for it, there was no contender. You say that it's a circuit breaker, but as long as Julia Gillard and Kevin Rudd are both in the parliament, how is it going to be a circuit breaker? Well, they're, they're in the parliament, they're elected. You really think that the solution is by resignation? I don't. What? Well, perhaps there is no solution. Politics is a tough game, and today was one of those days, I guess. You have to deal with all sorts of people, some that you don't like, some that you've... <laughs> violently disagree with and not necessarily those that just sit on the other side. But that's the nature of the game because we're a diverse society. So it's not a problem that people who have strong animosities or strong differences are required to sit in the same parliament. I don't see anything strange with that. What I do think though, there is an obligation on behalf of, because they're not there in their own right, let's face it, no matter how popular or unpopular people might be from time to time, they're not there other than through a Labor Party ticket. And therefore, they have to do the right thing by the party, not just advancing their own personal interests. That's why the decision that I took today, even though it didn't achieve the result it, it, that I would have um, argued should have been achieved, I did in the interests of the Labor Party. Do you have any regrets about the path no, you I took don't. today? No, I don't have any regrets whatsoever about the path that I took because I did it out of no personal gain, out of no animosity to, um, to Julia, uh, who I go back a long time with. It meant me having to put my differences aside with Kevin, but also pledging that in the healing process that I wanted to be part of the exercise that demonstrated the very point that you were just asking me about, that we could actually heal, that we could actually come together, so, so, settle our difference in the interests of unifying the show. But is now, there... if, if the, the result, that result didn't work, the one thing the Labor Party must now do is to unify around the result they got. But there not there a, another issue here? One side of it is the party healing, but the other side of it is whether or not Julia Gillard is the best person to put your message forward and whether or not the electorate likes her or listens to her. But that's, that's a judgment the party room makes. And I gave them the opportunity to make that. They made that decision today and I respect that decision. I've always abided by the caucus decisions and the reality, and so everyone should. But 
the reality is that it is far better to have the opportunity for the expression of that view, to settle it and to move on. Does the decision that the caucus has taken today uh, mean that Labor is headed for an electoral annihilation? Not necessarily. Obviously it is if the polls stay at 31-34. You can't win from that position. I've said that before. But I think that there are two reasons why they're down there. One is the destabilisation. Hopefully today we'll resolve that, and it must. Will it, though? It must. I don't think Kevin can credibly mount the argument to anyone, including in the media, sell the dummy again that he's got the numbers. What if as the election draws and, and closer... And really, I don't understand why he didn't want to test it, because well, presumably he was going to get more. He, he didn't stand last time. But perhaps because it wasn't to his timing. It wasn't to his timing. I well, don't accept that. What happens if, no, as the election... His, his side knew exactly what was involved. What happens if, as the election draws closer, your colleagues panic because they see that the polls aren't improving? Is there not a window that Kevin Rudd could, could come back in if, if, a, if a big majority of your colleagues said, we've got to do something, let's go to Kevin Rudd? I just think that um, the opportunity was given them today. I created that opportunity. I've got no regrets about having done that. But they've made their decision. That's what they've got to live with, adhere to, and move on from. Do you think that Julia Gillard and her office have a realistic view of how her leadership is perceived in the electorate? I, well, yeah, I think that um, there's a realisation that uh, partly that the destabilisation hasn't helped. I know what that's like because I had to live through it. But uh, I don't believe that the, um, it's just that. So clearly there has to be a firmer hand, a better set of processes, and we have to get greater clarity of, uh, you know, message in terms of, uh, you know, what we want to be judged by. So how does she get that clarity of message? I, I think that she, she'll know what to do, um, and I wish her the best. I will play whatever supportive role I can in the interests of the party. I always have been uh, a party man, but not just because it's blindness to the party. I, I've been part of a party that has changed this nation, done right the good things by the Australian nation. That's the exciting thing to be involved in, the Hawke Keating legacy, the boldness, the inclusion, the consensus operations, all of those things, taking hard decisions but bringing people with you, engaging them, persuading them, convincing them of your purpose. That's what, that's what a Labor Party is good at. And it's at its best when it does it properly. We've got a crew that is capable of doing it properly and I don't understand why we don't put that best proper foot forward all the time. Now, if we start doing it all the time, not just some of the time, if we do it all the time and we get rid of the static, then we present as a real alternative. We inspire a nation again. We remind people of what our brand really is. We don't have to invent our brand. At the moment, we're doing a lot to take people's minds off what it was. We don't have to reinvent it. We just have to reinforce it, rebuild it, and present a positive image going forward. Simon Crane, thank you very much. Pleasure.